Hey folks, welcome back to the next video in the series of the light fighter comparisons. I'm going to hop right into this. Of course, the, the members only video is going to be the longer, the uncut version with way more detail and the YouTube. There is a free version uh, for all other YouTube channel members. If you want to get access to the uncut, more detailed version with loadouts and, and you know, just just more information, then you'll have to become a YouTube channel member. And that goes for as low as uh, five bucks a month. And uh, then it goes up from there with more benefits from there. So thanks for stopping by. And without further ado, the next video in the series of the Light Fighter Comparisons. Well, hello, folks, and welcome to the section for the Anvil Hawk. Unfortunately, I don't own this ship, and so we have to do this part in Arena Commander. But this is an interesting ship. I did own it at one point in time, and it's it's actually a pretty neat ship. It is designed for bounty hunting, and it actually has a ton of guns. I mean, like a lot of guns, tons of guns, I should say, and uh, it, it, it should be, I guess, in my opinion, it should be better with the amount of guns it has, even though they're small guns. I don't really feel like it is, but again, I haven't flown in the master mode, so I guess we'll have to check it out and uh, and see how it goes. I guess I didn't find the storage if there is one. There is the seat down there. The ship does come equipped with two uh, military grade sea shields, two coolers, a power plant, and a size one quantum drive, kind of like the rest of the of the ships Engines in this comparison. Okay. Engines are now online in the Anvil Hawk, and we're just going to go ahead and lift it up a little bit, and we will go ahead and cycle the reverse tricycle landing gear, two up front, one in the back. Actually, it looks pretty cool. And there we go. So now the Hawk is, I guess, more Hawk-like. Uh, it's it's a little different as far as the shape goes. I'm not sure how much light we're going to be able to actually get on this ship. But I will fly it. I mean, there's the sun. I'm just... It does a really good port and starboard lights, port red, green starboard. Um, and it, it's an interesting shape and interesting point to this ship, uh, if, if, if that makes sense. One of the things the ship does have, uh, unlike the other ships, it does have a EMP on the ship. Uh, so that's, you can see this in the top right corner of uh, all, out of all six of the weapons, it has a Tromag burst generator. So it's one of the few ships in the games that has an EMP. It has four multi-function displays up front here and kind of a 3D radar that's kind of weird down here. Um, let's look at what buttons it has available. Uh, there is an ejection handle in the center. I like the keyboard over here, but no buttons work on that. It's got our basic engine on. Um, a power off button. Is that a button? No. Nope. Open exterior. And it looks like that's really about it, which is too bad. I would really like this ship to have a good old standard pass. It is not by any means stealthy, as we can see this IR of 8300, cross section of 11201, and it's a high cross section, an EM of 8700. Uh, it's not stealthy at all. And it has uh, some struts here that kind of block the view, although it does kind of remind me a little bit of a X wing from inside of it. And we can see the ground down here. Oh, look, and there's an exit zero G because the seat goes down to exit. But we actually can see the ground. That's one of the few ships here that you can see the ground uh, just flying around. And that's kind of nice. So while we're at it, we're going to go ahead and turn on the EMP. If you don't know how to do that, you're going to go to 
the power menu, I believe, items, and turn on the Tromag burst generator. Now it is on and it's it's ready to be charged. So we'll charge it up. We'll go ahead and get some speed going. And as we're flying around in the Hawk, we go ahead and reset our view, zoom out a little bit. I'll go ahead and start charging the EMP. You can see that big blue bubble starting to form. It's getting there. This is a size two EMP and it puts out 2,475 EMP damage. So our EMP is fully charged and now we can bam, pop out the EMP. I never really need effect to the EMP, uh, to be quite honest. Let's go ahead and get its SCM speed going straight. It is 222 meters a second. In boost, the EMP is 400 and or for the EMP, the speed is 470. We'll go ahead and switch over to nav mode. Alright, let's let's find out what our top speed is in the Anvil Hawk. Looks like 1174 is our top speed. Let's give it some maneuverability checks as we head back towards Jericho as our reference point. Okay, at SCM speed, let's give it a pitch check in space. It actually feels pretty darn good. Uh, it, it feels pretty maneuverable from here. Yaw is not as good. Yaw is a little slow. And let's check our roll. Roll is actually pretty decent. Roll feels pretty good. Overall, the ship actually feels and flies pretty smooth. We'll check out some of the afterburner animation. As we roll around here. Get a little pitch check. All right, so that's kind of how the Anvil Hawk flies. Now let's, I guess, test out in combat, see how it does against Pirate Swarm. Stand by. All right, we're here in the Anvil Hawk, and we I'm going to turn on the EMP generator. I have time, and I do. We're going to wait for our bad guys to show up there they are i'm gonna to start to charge emp i don't think missiles oh that's right there's no missiles in the anvil hawk so just as a fyi one of the downsides of this ship all the weapons fire off a group one here i did fire the emp I don't love that every weapon's tied here, but you, you can't, you can only do so much when you have an EMP on this ship. Let's see how those distortions, and we're already out of our bags or laser repeaters. Start to charge up our EMP again. Ooh. How are we doing against this Tana? We're going to be reviewing you a little bit later, Mr. Tana. EMP is charged, popping it again. Did I actually disable the Tana? No, it's still flying. Boom. But I apparently did run into it. Oh, I lost a, I lost a wing. Oh, this thing is gonna fly like crazy. That's weird how I actually wasn't pressing forward, but I ran into that ship. So let's see how it does now. It looks like the EMP still works. Survivability of the end of lock. I don't know how good it's gonna fly considering I can't really move forward very well. I have to counter it. And shoot at range. Notice the distortions in the 227s are significantly different. This thing is not doing well. well maybe I can go into. Oh. 
It's I can fly it, but it's actually quite difficult to keep it on on track here. Dropping that EMP. Not sure if anything happened. Where is my target? Charging it up again. Oh, man. <laughs> Not great. Not great. See, those distortions just aren't really doing anything to shut his ship down. Popping the EMP again. Hitting my friends. And that distortion is also loud. Although this Aurora is pretty damaged. Parts and Alright, right, we got one. Alright, so I think that's about going to cover it for the Anvil Hawk. Uh, survivability is okay, but just is not doing well with half a ship. All right, folks, so let's talk about the Anvil Hawk as far as the ship's stats are concerned. Hopefully, I'm um, decently easy to see here at Bloodshot Ridge. Uh, at least it's a cool looking background, right? Um, so first off, the Anvil Hawk has a number of unique capabilities, a number of things that not quite every ship has, right? It's, it's a bounty hunting ship. It is made to carry a bounty, even though I can't fit in the back anymore. I can't find the ship storage. It is kind of a neat ship. I just, I don't think the game is really ready for the end. They'll hawk yet uh, until Bounty Hunting V2 comes out, among other things. The good things about the end they'll hawk is that it has an above average armor damage resistance percentile, 54%. Unfortunately, that's the only thing that's actually above average for the end they'll hawk. Um, it has a number of bad things. Uh, it, it is tied for the worst in class missile damage because surprise, it doesn't have any missiles. That's one thing the ship could actually kind of use is missiles, um, at least a few. But yeah, no missiles for the Anvil Hawk, but it does have six guns. So I wouldn't go with the stock loadout necessarily, but it has six guns. It has a number of other things that are below average as well. Because it has no missiles and the guns are relatively small sized, it has below average total weapon damage, um, which is kind of to be expected with no missiles. It has below average stealth. Uh, the cross section on the ship is really large, so stealth is pretty darn high. Not the worst out of the light fighters, but one of the worst at 28,800 for a total stealth mod. Uh, it also has a below average quantum fuel tank of 612. Um, so not not the greatest. Some of the some of the X factors for the Endo Hawk is that, hey, it's got tons of guns, right? Six guns. I would change them out 100 um, percent. But but out of all those guns stock, it just does average damage. It doesn't have any missiles. Good damage resistance. It has the bounty pod in the back. It comes with distortion weapons if you're into distortion weapon gameplay, but it also has bad stealth. One of the other things that's not on the X factors is that it is an EMP ship, so you can go through and it's got a size two EMP, a single size two EMP. So it's not a Saber Raven here, but uh, a, a similar, a single, basically a single EMP to the Saber Ravens two EMPs. It's the same EMP generator. So yes, it has EMP. It, it's made to shut down ships, although you can't put your distortions by themselves because you have the EMP unless you just load up with full distortions. So unless they give us a third weapon key, you're shooting your lasers or your ballistics along with your distortions. So, well, hey folks. So here we are. The ship behind me is one of the first alien ships in the lineup, the Apoa car to all. And it is it is actually a really neat ship. It has a few really good things about it and a few really bad things about it. Um, 
I have yet to fly it in master mode, so this will be an interesting treat for me. Um, I don't own it, so we are here in Arena Commander at uh, SPK, and yeah, we're going to check out the Apoa Kartu Wall. One of, one of the defining characteristics of the Kartu Wall is that it's very maneuverable, and that still holds true as far as these light fighters are concerned. I believe it is the most maneuverable out of all the light fighters, which we're going to talk about when we do fly it around. Um, and one of the weird things about it, it has the best in class flight time. You can fly this ship for something like 190, 189 minutes before having to get hydrogen fuel. So extremely fuel efficient as well on the car tool. And that's without scooping. That's without refueling. I mean, you could fly this thing for three hours. Um, so pretty cool. It does have some some downsides to it, though. But uh, yeah, let's go check out the alien ship, the Apoa Cartuol. <clears throat> oh, well, for that, uh, let's go ahead and enter the Cartuol. You see that magic ladder. We hear the alien sounds of the Cartuol. And of course, my breathing because it's so cold out here in space. OK, the cold breathing has stopped. Let's go ahead and turn on power. Systems activated. Systems on. Oh, the weird bug sound of, of the of this ship. It's pretty cool. OK, let's take a cockpit tour here. Um, we can see tons of glass on the side, even though there's like little tiny struts and they're circular, but lots of glass. And this will change when we're actually flying around. Instead of a stick, you actually have these two balls which control kind of how you move the ship. We can see that there's Three MFDs, ship status target, the most important ones, the ones that you can see all the time. And then down here we have our, you know, our IR and things like that. Um, we have a button for engine on, power, uh, open exterior. That may be the only buttons. I don't think this ship has had a gold pass. I think that's it. There's no other buttons up here. Let's look at our stealth. Uh, we're looking at about 99.46 for IR. That's pretty high. 82.22 for cross section. Not terrible. EM is pretty low at 7,000. At least it's it's low for, for right now. Uh, the ship is equipped with two size four guns, um, so that's pretty impressive. Two size one shields, one power plant, two coolers, and an EOS quantum drive. But it, it is lacking in some weapons, right? And we're going to talk about that in just a sec, especially when we get into combat. So here's the car to all lying around in its lone kind of crab configuration. Let me get clear of SBK before I, I do the, the transformation here. So that's with the landing gear down. And let's go ahead and transform the ship by hitting landing gear. There we go. So the back side goes up and the forward side goes down. And now our ship is totally different looking. And it's it's really cool how it does this. Now you can see those engines that are on a gimbal giving it it's it's very good maneuverability. You can see as we maneuver and turn the engines are moving up and down left and right. And that's what gives the car to well, it's really good maneuverability, but it's actually because of this, this structure down here on the bottom, it's really hard to judge where the bottom of the ship is because I can't see it from the cockpit. Right? So I just have to guess that, Hey, this thing extends, you know, 30 feet down and that makes it hard to fly the ship and move the ship around. It does have two big size four guns right there. So let's give it a, a whirl in space. You can see it doesn't have other thrusters as far as I can tell. It just has the engines on a gimbal. So you're getting big, big thrusters here that are better than, you know, having 20 small thrusters, I, I suppose. Ooh almost blacked out there. Interesting. All right, so let's just give it normal SCM speed. We're doing 225 meters a second. Boost speed in space, getting it up to 500. 
Let's go into nav mode. Okay, let's give it its full speed. Woohoo! We are cruising. 1200 SCM. So, not as impressive as. But it, it is pretty darn quick. It is pretty darn quick. Alright, going back into regular mode. Let's give it. We got SPK in our sights here. Let's give it a pitch check. Maneuverability feels actually a little slow in pitch, but it, I know it's good. Let's give it a yaw check against Selen here. The yaw feels really fast compared to most ships. And let's go ahead and give it a roll. It rolls pretty decently, not crazily good. I think I've been in some ships that roll faster, but overall, pretty good. Let's go back into third person, give it some afterburner. You see those engines kind of turn to the back and there's some roll so very maneuverable ship that is kind of the cartwheels claim to fame so that is the basic flight mechanics i think it's time to go pick a fight with the cartwheel and uh, see how we get on with that so stay tuned all right folks so here we are in the cartwheel uh ready to go essentially waiting for Pirates to spawn in. We are in Arena Commander because I no longer own this ship. I used to own it a while ago. All right, let's. Uh... Okay, I get it. A lot of contacts. Thank you, Siri. All right, let's give it some. Oh my God! Well, that happened. Uh... <laughs> a little jousting, maybe. Uh, interesting. Um, let's. Deploying it, I suppose. <laughs> wow, that was crazy. Um, they were going right for me, and I was going right for them. So let's let's not have that one happen again. These size four guns, they are right above you, which actually feels pretty good. I'm gonna bump up my guns a little bit because I do have high hit points on this ship, and it is really maneuverable. So that is the benefit of the car to all, but I need to recharge those guns. Okay, Tana. Tana has a weird profile. I'm actually excited to fly the, the Tana in the, in the future of this review because I haven't flown one in a while. Oh, now he wants to shoot back. Okay. Because the guns are on the top, it feels weird. Um, it just feels odd. I, I feel like they should be more centered. But pretty quick uh, destruction on that ship. Try not to crash into anybody else. Here is an RSI Aurora. A land. Oh, almost blacked out there. Reading out because of boost, I guess. Not quite in range for this guy, but. Able to get him at a little bit of range. Let's see if we can use our maneuverability a bit. Let's see if we can grab this guy. And flying on mouse and keyboard. Not the best at maneuvering on mouse and keyboard. No. Alert. Front crash close. Bear with me, please. Hey! And then I ran straight through him. So there we go. A little Apoa car to all in combat. Very maneuverable ship. Feels good flying around. Pretty powerful as well. All right, folks, so let's talk about the Apoa car to all as far as stats are concerned. It has a couple really good things going for it. First off, it has best in class maneuverability. Uh, the pitch, yeah, roll, uh, multiplier, the, the, the numbers add up to be really, really good. Um, 324, which is very high, best in the class for maneuverability. It also has best in class flight time of 189 minutes. You can fly the ship without having to refuel it for hydrogen and uh, without scooping. So really good flight time. And I mean, it's 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 best thing is it's maneuverability, to be honest with you. And that is due to those four engines on a gimbal. 
It also has above average hit points. Um, it can take quite the beating, although the shields are just normal, average. The hit points are up there. Not the best, but 14,300 is uh, pretty nice to have, especially when you're talking about a light fighter. But it does have some downsides. Of course, as you saw, uh, probably in the dogfight, it has no missiles. Uh, it has two size four guns, which is nice. Those guns can pack a punch, but no missiles on the ship. There's no room for them, I suppose, uh, because it is, although I think there's room for them. The Sabre Firebird can fit uh, 24 of them. Uh, this ship can fit a couple, but no missiles on the cartoon wall. Uh, <laughs> The worst in class missile damage below average armor and total weapon damage um, because of the lack of missiles. Um, the armor damage resistance is uh, 50%, which is below the average of most of the ship's uh, class. Uh, it also has below average stealth, um, the stealth modifier on this thing because of its weird shape and how it extends. It's not great. The cross section is pretty high. Uh, IR is actually really high as well. Uh, so 25,000 for its total stealth number. It's a lot. Uh, and lastly, uh, besides it not having any cargo, which most of these ships don't, it's very expensive. It's not the most expensive, which is shocking. It's scary, but very expensive. 7.2 million Alpha UBC for the car to all. So it's a capable light fighter, but it really has no other utility. So you're paying the alien tax on that price. Overall, the cartridge wall gets a grade of a C plus. I'm giving it that because it has no other utility to it. It has no other function except being a light fighter, which is fine because this is a light fighter slash light freight comparison. And it has such good maneuverability and hit points. I could care less about the flight time, to be honest, but maneuverability is huge. I wanted to kind of give it a C, but it's it edges out the other C class or the C grades. But no missiles, uh, total weapon damage is not great and not stealthy at all. And because it's so expensive to buy in game is why it's down in the C, giving it the plus because of its bonuses. All right, folks, it is now time to take a look at the ship behind me, the Banu Defender, one of the alien ships in this review and considered a light fighter. Uh, it is a pretty interesting ship. It actually has some really awesome paintwork on it, and the design of it is really cool, if if not a little bit confusing, I guess I would say. Um, but man, it has has some really neat features that we'll go over when we do the grading. Um, one of the only ships that has, I believe, size two shields. It, yeah, one size two super round shield, which as of right now doesn't do a whole lot because shields are all crazy. But uh, the super round used to basically eliminate a lot of physical damage, I believe. Uh, and it doesn't do that anymore <laughs> now that shields are kind of going through a rebalance. But uh, it does have a lot of shield hit points, and I believe it's the only size two shield in the light fighter class. And uh, one of the crazy things about the ship is actually how slow it is compared to a lot of the other life fighters. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's let's take a look at the Banu Defender. I think most of the alien races are bipeds in here. There is quite a bit of glass. You can see the other cockpit over there, and I believe you can fly from either seat. Um, so pretty good. There's some weird struts over there, uh, but you know, let's take a cockpit tour. There is an eject over here. Um, we got an engine on. I like the way the mapping is on this. It's like a kind of laid out with little buttons everywhere. Um, there's four MFDs, a 2D radar, which is kind of weird. Uh, open exterior, power off. Um, that may be it. For, it looks like that's about it for buttons. So. Uh, our singe cannons, they have a whole four shots a piece. Um, tachyon cannons, they are very powerful, though. So let's take an external look as we open up our hangar. And we'll lift up. Yeah, you know, the, the wings kind of down a little bit. Let's articulate the landing gear. 
Ooh, very nice. A little, little bit transformery as the gear came up. Oh, I better back up a little bit because the the forward part of those wings kind of went forward as we did that. Make sure we don't hit them as we actually come up. Okay, we're good. We're good. It is nighttime out here. And let's start moving through space. How do you like the green engines? I think it looks pretty dope. Um, the green trails, the way that the, the forward part of the ship sits, putting those cannons all the way forward. It has a really, really cool look to it. Very unique. Um, no other ship like it in, in the game. And it's the only Banu ship in the game. Okay. So I think we need to see how it fights. So let me call up a combat mission and we'll catch you up when that's over. Stand by. Actually, before we do the combat mission, let's test out the speed in space, why don't we? Um, so SCM speed right now, 220, pretty standard. I kind of hear a little bit of sound with the boost, 449, probably 450 for, for that maximum SCM boost, which is, you know, on whole average. Let's see its maximum navigational speed. Hold some Gs there, 1150, so actually quite slow. It's max nav speed. Let's take a look at these stealth numbers, not stealthy at all. Uh, 8974 for IR. 18,100 for cross section. And yes, EM's bleeding down because I was just in nav mode, but um, 18,100 for cross section is really high. Uh, as far as missiles, it does carry four Ignite fours for missiles. So it does have missiles. And I'm going to go ahead and fire these Singe cannons. You hear the charge? Boom! So I was holding down the whole time. We can let go early, but it doesn't it doesn't help. So you do have to kind of hold it down and be on target and it automatically goes. So I haven't fought with these charged up cannons yet um, on the on the defender. So I, I'm wondering how much damage they're really going to do. I think they're going to do a lot, but getting on target could be difficult. All four at once. Woo. Crazy stuff. All right, let's go find a combat mission. Stand by. Right, so we do have a little bit of light coming out, but I am going to turn my reshade up a little bit. So apologies for the brightness. Um, but we are headed to this. It's an LRT mission, so I guess we'll see how we do. The The Banu Defender, I mean, I haven't flown it in Master Modes yet. A lot of these I haven't flown in Master Modes at all. Um, when I'm 20k out, I am going to uh, go into SCM mode. So one of the big benefits of the Defender is that it has size 2 shields. It's the only light fighter with size 2 shields. But that is pretty interesting to me, at least. It... It does lack in some departments, like the power plants. Um, and it has those Jesus beams. So one of the other big things is it has fuel forever, right? You can actually put uh, the fastest quantum drive on here for size one. And not run out of fuel and get all the way around Stanton because the fuel tank is so large. But it actually is quite slow. It does sound good, though. Yeah, the alien sounds on this thing are really cool. Let's see if we can get a couple missiles on our target, if we can get there. Oh my gosh, immediately going down. I'm going to try to get it on the other guy. Okay, there's two missiles. Woo! The missiles are going on this guy. I think. Maybe they didn't hit. Okay. It, do it doesn't have the greatest boost in the world, but uh, I was on the wrong target, of course. And I need to hold my target. Oh my gosh. 
it's I don't know if I like this charge mechanic <laughs> on the weapons the whole time because you need to be accurate oh my god but they do a ton of damage holy crap Ola good thing it has a lot of shields wow Ooh, those things were going quick. Can we get missiles on them? Oh, don't run into an asteroid, Vanu Defender. I don't know the range on these things, cannons. They seem like they'd be pretty good. Oh, gosh. Took all of his shields down. Come on. Well, that's what, two shots at least? Aegis Avenger Titan, another light fighter. He's a little more agile than me. Although I think I'm doing some decent damage to him. But I can't hit my target to save my life. He's getting some shots in, for sure. Taking longer than I thought compared with the other ships. Really need to hit that pip. This is one of those ships you have to really be pip focused because you can't, there's no, not a lot of spread here. I thought it would be doing a little bit more damage. Is he in a death spiral? He can't be already, can he? Maybe. Thing invincible there we go wow it's gone now holy jeez going back to normal reshade mode well those targets went up pretty darn quick uh no visible damage from what i can see on the defender and i don't see any red on my screen so not bad, but with the charge mechanic and dogfighting, you know, using boosts and all that stuff, it's it's a little different for sure. So gonna take some getting used to on that. But still pretty handy. Those cannons do a ton of damage. I mean like thousands in the alpha damage category. So right, so let's take a look at the stats for the Banu Defender. So first off, on the really good points, it does have the best in class shields. Um, it has a size two super round shield. And while the shields don't give you a ton of benefits right now, because I'm assuming they're being reworked and they're not all going to be the exact same hit points, you do get like 6,000 hit points, which is the most out of any light fighter in this review. And so, uh, especially in the dark fight, I don't think anything really got through besides the ballistics and they didn't do any real damage. It also has the best in class quantum fuel tank, uh, 2,887 in the quantum fuel. And that is the most for, I think, any size ship of this size, like any. Basically, you can stick the base, the best quantum drive on this ship for a size one and get anywhere in the verse. So it can take the fastest quantum drive, which is actually really nice. It's awesome. It has uh, an above average weakest vital part. So while it can take some hits, uh, actually disabling the ship for soft death uh, takes a little while because a good vital part hit points. And it has an above average flight time, about 55 zero minutes uh, flying around with hydrogen before you need to refuel. And it does scoop a little bit, I believe, but not a ton. Um, but it does have some downsides to it. Uh, first off, it is the by far the worst stealth ship stealth light fighter in the game and um, 41,938 for its stealth combined modifier. And that is a lot. Definitely the worst by a large margin out of any of the light fighters in the category. So they're going to see you coming from a mile away, especially with the cross section. It has a below average armor damage resistance modifier. Uh, it's 50 percent, which a lot of these ships have, but that is below average compared to most of the ships. Uh, below average maximum navigational speed. So while the regular SCM and boost 
are just average. Uh, they match a lot of the other ships, 220 and 480. The max nav speed of 1150 is... I'm not sure why it's like that, because it has two engines, but maybe it's because it's so heavy. I, I don't know, but it's 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 slow on nav speed. And uh, unfortunately, the ship is subject to the alien tax because it's a brand new ship. So it is quite expensive. Six point two three seven million Alpha UVC. Overall, the Banu Defender gets a solid grade of a B. It was was really close to a B plus, but the the having a worst in class stat does not put you in the A category. Unfortunately, uh, especially with stealth, BR, uh, damage resistance percentage, low nav speed, and and being very expensive to buy in game. So, all of B, I believe it's well deserved. Well, thanks for stopping by and watching our video, folks. Don't forget to tune in to the next video coming soon. Pay attention to YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. Click the notification bell when you want the next one to come up. And uh, look out for the next video. It's, it's in edit right now. I can guarantee you that. And if you're interested in getting way more detail, make sure to check out the members only section. Uh, you can become a YouTube channel member for as low as five bucks a month and get way more detail in these videos. But thank you for stopping by. We'll see you in the next one.